So I'm going to introduce you to cord quilting. Now there's an array of quilting techniques, but this particular one takes sections of a design and um, makes um, a raised effect to those areas using cord. So you start with two pieces of fabric sandwiched together like so. And you draw out your design on the top layer of fabric. So here I've done quite a simple design just to show this as a sample. And then you would make sure that the area that you want to cord, you're doing like a little train track or tram lines and doing two double lines. Now the width of that double line should be enough to fit your cording through but not too big so that it won't bulge when you've actually got the cording in there. So this is the cording that I'm going to use. It's best to use um, one that's quite smooth like this because it will go through the material much quicker and easier. So you measure to make sure that the width that you're leaving between your lines is going to um, be enough and that it's going to obviously show an effect of the cording when it's complete. So you can see that I've been doing a stitch here and I've already started to do my outline. Now that stitch is called back stitch. And basically I'm going to just show you by finishing off the last little bits. So you make sure that you always start just ahead of yourself to where you want your stitch to end up being. So we're just going in the front and we're going to the last one that we started so there's no gap. So that's because we don't want the cording to show through or come through on our sides. We just put that and then the next one we go back on ourselves so we're coming back round and leaving a gap again for our stitch. Back so there's no gap to the back of the fabric all the way through the two layers and we just keep repeating that. Now I'm using quite big stitches but um, to show you how to do this but traditionally they are quite little that depends what kind of effect you want to achieve with your top stitch. So I'm just going to finish the last one of those So, turn it round and just do a couple of little stitches to secure that on the side, like so. Pull that through. I'll snip that. So you've got your two lines running together and in between will be where the cording. So we just go to the back you can see the lines haven't got a gap and we're going to make a little snip just at the start and at the end but you need to make sure that you're just getting the top layer of fabric there that you're not getting there so I've already snipped mine but what you need to do is pinch and pull the top layer and make a little hole there then attach a tapestry needle, so that's the one with the blunt end, to your cording piping. And then you feed the tapestry needle all the way through. Make sure that you don't accidentally poke through your stitching, so guide it through until it pops out like that and give it a little tug. You see it might ruffle a little bit like that. Now because I'm using quite thick cording, I'm just going to help it through a little bit with a pair of scissors. But again, be careful you don't poke through to the front of your design. You're just easing that through. Now because sometimes it can be a bit fiddly. You have to be a little bit patient about tugging that through so that it doesn't get caught in any other stitching. So using so once it gets going, that's it. 
this is why it's good to use quite a smooth there. So you can start to see it pulling through until it pops out. So it pops out at the front and then you've got your two ends there. If we turn it round, just manipulate that into place. You can start to see that you've got a raised section to your embroidery or your, and that is called quilting. Now it's worth mentioning that obviously the bigger the cord that you use, the stronger that raised surface will be. And again, I'm using red thread here so you can see it nice and clearly of um, where I'm stitching and uh, the type of stitch. But obviously depending on your design, you would um, use something that maybe you can't see as much. And again, you'd see that raised effect onto that. Just turn it around to the back so you can have another look there. And you can see those two moving independently like that. Now to finish that you can stitch down your end so if that's just the area that you want to be using and that's just where you want to be cording you can carry it on if you want to. So you could start adding so if you wanted to carry on here you might be doing something with your leaf you could carry on but if not cut it off and stitch to the back of the fabric there to secure it and you can also um, mend that little hole there so it's nice and secure so it's not going to move and that is the basic process of cord quilting <laughs>